Hey everyone, I'm Trevor, and I built a Disneyland trip for four, factoring in every possible expense that you could imagine to give you the true cost of a Disneyland vacation. So let's get going. In order to help us price out this vacation, I had to decide on a fictional family of four with two adults and two kids, where the kids, just to make it more reasonable, uh, the kids are 10 and up, which means they qualify for adult tickets. We're gonna do a three-day park hopper with Genie Plus. The vacation is going to be five total days, checking in on a Monday. Monday, checking out on a Friday and in the park Tuesday Wednesday and Thursday the dates that we are specifically using for prices is May 13th through the 17th now the first need you're going to encounter is travel of course and I decided to fly out of Pittsburgh Pennsylvania Pittsburgh is the area where I grew up so a lot of vacations that I did as a kid flew out of Pittsburgh as far as their their airport goes now we live in san diego so i factored in kind of both prices in a sense uh we're gonna start off with what do you do with your car you're gonna have to drive to the airport right you have to leave your car somewhere so like a park and ride or a place where you can just park your car and then get a shuttle over to the airport in pittsburgh pennsylvania this averages about 12 to 15 dollars a day depending on the situation of the, the parking spot that you're picking here in San Diego, it's a bit more expensive at $22 to $25 a day. However, we're just gonna take the average of $20 a day, the, a good uh, in-between for you know wherever you happen to be coming from. So at $20 a day, you will need five days, Monday through Friday. Therefore, we need $100 for parking. Next up is gonna be the flight cost itself. Now, there are two airports that you could fly into here close to Disneyland. There's John Wayne, and then there's LAX. Of course, a lot of people don't like to fly into LAX because of how big and congested and difficult it is to navigate. However, LAX is probably gonna have the cheaper prices for a lot of big city interconnections. However, let's start off with John Wayne. When you include a round trip, there are two options that we're gonna consider. The two lowest options on the cheapest flight that we are able to find that's not a red eye. And that is about $547 a person for the ticket that allows no changes, no refund. You are stuck traveling on that date. And then there's another ticket that offers uh, no change fees. So you can change the dates if you need to, if something comes up. Still non-refundable, but it's a much better deal at about $660. Per person so uh, a little bit more than a hundred dollars a person extra but uh, because it gives me more peace of mind gives most people more peace of mind we're gonna go with that price overall to price out this trip so at 660 a person for a family of four for a round-trip flight to John Wayne it's gonna cost twenty six hundred dollars once you include taxes and fees now if we choose to fly into LAX a Spirit Airways option appears at hundred and twenty five dollars a person however we're gonna avoid that just because of the problems that are surrounding Spirit and we're instead going to go with with, you know the, the lowest option that's not spirit which is gonna be about five hundred and fourteen dollars for that non refundable no changes ticket or six fourteen for that non refundable but you can change the dates without fees ticket that means that a family of four could reasonably expect to fly into LAX for just $2,400 just, right? But it's $200 cheaper than flying into John Wayne. However, you also have to factor in the transportation from the airport to Disneyland. Since LAX is further away, it is gonna be a bit more expensive. Before we mention that transportation, however, we also need to talk about baggage because assuming that you are flying with a normal airline that doesn't offer free bags, you are going to need probably a suitcase per person. And so let's factor in about $35 a bag times four is $140 one way. Round trip is gonna be $280 for that baggage. Now, once you get here, like I said, you need to get to the Disneyland Resort. So in order to figure this out, I just downloaded the Uber app. You could do that from home. Uh, pick whatever airport that you want to fly into and then tell it to go to the hotel that you're going to be staying at. We chose the best Western Park place in, and we'll talk about that in just a little bit. From John Wayne, it is going to be $54.50, roughly, uh, for one way. And then from LAX, it's going to be $115 to get to the same location. So it is quite a bit more expensive because it is further away. Round trip is 230 from LAX or 109 from John Wayne. If all of this is starting to sound very expensive, keep watching because at the end, we're gonna share with you our best money-saving tips for visiting Disneyland. Now, in my exact scenario, 
The John Wayne flight gets in at 10.30 in the morning where the LAX flight doesn't get in until 3.30 in the afternoon. So I'm gonna choose the John Wayne flight personally, even though it's an extra $100 or so. It gets me in five hours earlier and that's a huge plus. That's gonna bring our running total up to $3,100 and we haven't even factored in tickets or hotel costs. So while we're talking about hotels, we decided to stay at the Best Western Plus Park Place Inn, which is the closest hotel to Disneyland outside of the Disneyland Resort. And it'll run you $331 a night for the dates that I picked. And that's gonna be four nights. With taxes, it comes out to $1,551 dollars for those four nights including the taxes that the you know the hotel tax on and so uh if you were to stay at the disneyland hotel that price would probably about double it's a little over six hundred dollars a night at the disneyland hotel on average and if you were to stay at the anaheim majestic garden hotel it would about half as i find it to be in the 180 dollar night range so uh the best western plus is actually a pretty good middle road option it even has free breakfast which is going to be a huge factor in our food portion of the video coming in just a bit. If you are enjoying this video and finding it helpful, please hit the like and subscribe button. It really does help out the channel. And if you'd like to save money on your next Disneyland vacation, call my friends at Getaway today and tell them that SoCal Disney Dad sent you. Alternatively, you can click the link down in the description and use my coupon code to save on their already discounted packages. Now let's talk about Disneyland park tickets. You're gonna be here for three days, so there are a couple of options when you're looking at a three-day ticket. The first is a one park per day where you only get to go into the park that you choose, be it Disneyland or Disney California Adventure. That ticket is going to run you $15.60 for a party of four, again, where the people in the party are all over the age of 10. If you have children that are between the ages of three and nine, the ticket will be lower. If you have children under the age of three, that is they are two or below, their ticket is free. They don't have a ticket at all. They can just come into the park. Um, so $15.60 for those 10 and up tickets for one park per day. If you want to add a park hopper, it adds an extra $280, bringing it up to $18.40. What is that? It's $70 per person for the duration of your trip. There is no cost per day. It fluctuates slightly. If you were to do a four day, it would still be 70, but if you were to go down to a two day, it would drop to 65. So there is some wiggle room in the park hopper tickets, but for the most part, it's not like Walt Disney World. Ours is good for the duration of your trip. So for an extra $280, you can come and go to the parks as you please. We're gonna price out this ticket. And then we're also gonna add the Genie Plus add-on option. Now you can buy it when you get here, so you just buy it for one or maybe two days. But again, just to overestimate things so that you know what to expect, we're gonna add Genie Plus to every single day of the trip and we're gonna pre-add it when we book our ticket. Why am I pre-adding it? Well, because depending on the busyness of the day, Genie Plus may cost more than the lowest amount of $30. However, if you pre-book it, you will always pay the lowest amount of $30 per person. So what that's gonna to amount to is $120 a day or $360 extra on top of our ticket. Add that to our 1840 and we get a total of $2,200 for Disneyland Park tickets. Now, if you book with Getaway today, you'll actually save between five and 10% off the rack rate of the hotel and Disneyland ticket cost. Getaway today has deals and negotiations with the area hotels, as well as with Disneyland itself to provide some special offerings depending on your situation. In most cases, it ends up being between, like I said, five and 10%. That's going to save you between $200 and $300 on average, which is a pretty great savings. So I do recommend booking with Getaway Today. However, for the purposes of this video, we are going to leave Getaway Today's prices out of the equation. This brings our running total up to $6,800. And we haven't even factored in food and souvenirs yet. I created a tentative food budget for this video, and of course, your mileage may vary. We're gonna overestimate on a lot of these things. We're assuming, of course, again, that we have four like adults. If you have teenage boys, they're gonna eat a lot of food. So they're gonna be getting adult meals, their own adult meals, during this video, but if you wanna save some money, you obviously can uh, combine food, you can 
get less snacks, share things. So uh, there are definitely ways to make this more affordable. Uh, but you're going to arrive on Monday. You're getting in at 10.30. That's early enough for lunch. So we're going to factor in a quick service and a table service for each of our days in the parks. Again, you can also save some money by doing total quick service instead of table service as well. But for Monday, day zero, you don't have a park ticket, so you are going to be confined to downtown Disney. We're going to eat lunch at Earl of a Sandwich. Then we're going to get a snack, mid-afternoon snack, from Salt and Straw, which is an ice cream place here at downtown Disney. And then we are going to end our night going to Naples restaurant for a sit-down dinner and all this combined came out to about $203 factoring in a 20% tip at table service restaurants and taxes that you are going to pay whenever you're buying food of course so $203 for the first day Monday for our park days we are gonna get free breakfast at our hotel I told you that was gonna be crucial to help us save some money so free breakfast at our hotel then we are gonna come and get a mid-morning snack from Marisa Streets, one of my favorite places to go, especially to get that uh, garlic cheesy pretzel bread. And for lunch, we're gonna go to the Jolly Holiday Bakery Cafe. Again, one of my favorite places to eat here at Disneyland. Then for an afternoon snack, we're gonna go to Tropical Hideaway to get a Dole Whip because of course you have to get the classic Dole Whip when you're here at Disneyland. And then we're gonna eat at Carnation Cafe for dinner, followed up by a churro for an evening snack as we're riding some rides there around, you know, eight or nine o'clock in the evening. Provided the churro carts are still open that late, not exactly sure. But uh, all total, Again, including taxes and a tip for the sit-down dinner at Carnation Cafe. It comes out to $297 for day one. We're just going to round it up to $300. Remember, this is for a party of four, which is essentially for adult-sized portions. My kids split an adult meal themselves, and a lot of the times Amy and I can split an adult meal as well, so there will be savings. Oh, I also forgot to mention, this factors in beverages at all of these locations. Now, Amy and I tend to just drink water. But uh, if you like soda, outside the park at Earl of Sandwich is $3.99 for a soda. Inside the park is a bit more expensive. At the places around here is like $4.59 a soda. So you're factoring in about $16 to $20 for soda per meal. And this does not factor in beer at all because we do not drink alcohol. And so I know those prices are almost three times that amount. And so we didn't factor any of that in. So just kind of like an average of $300 per day for a family of four. We times that by three for three days is 900. Add in the 200 from the first day and we get an, a food budget of roughly 1100. Now on the final day, that Friday, you're gonna get free breakfast at your hotel and you're immediately gonna go to the airport. So there is gonna be no in-park food purchasing going on that day. So we have $1,100 for food. And for the souvenir portion, we're actually gonna come to a gift shop and look at some live prices. Now the primary things that you would purchase in gift shops, the, the things that everybody really wants when they come to Disneyland are gonna be those mini ears, especially if you're girls anyway. They do have some guy-related Mickey ears, but uh, those costs are gonna be between 35 and 40 $40 is the one that we found. And then there is the Lounge Fly backpack. And again, this isn't just for girls. In fact, I have a Star Wars Lounge Fly myself. The average price on these is going to be running close to $80. And then we have just a regular t-shirt. Everyone wants to buy a Disneyland t-shirt, right? Well, that will run you about $35. And then, of course, we have the Spirit Jersey. Everybody loves to buy Spirit Jerseys as well. And those are going to run in the $80 to $85 range. So uh, pretty pricey souvenirs. So we're allowing ourselves to purchase one expensive souvenir and one cheap souvenir. We're going to give ourselves a souvenir budget of $125 a person or $500 in total. And that brings our grand total for everything. Parking, plane tickets, baggage, transportation to and from Disneyland, hotel costs, Disneyland tickets, food costs, souvenirs, all of that comes to a grand total of $8,400. Wow, that is pretty jaw-dropping. Now, of course, if you're semi-local within like a five-hour range, you could just drive here and that will cut the $2,600 of plane tickets out of the equation. You will have parking fees at the hotel that you're at, roughly between $20 and $40 a night, depending on what hotel you're staying at. Uh, but again, that's a huge savings if you're local. So you can sort of do quick math on your own, say, well, I don't need that, so I'm going to remove this amount. Uh, but 
$8,400 if you're coming from the East Coast and you need absolutely everything that I mentioned here in this video. By now you are in desperate need of my money saving tips. So click this video to keep watching. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button on your way out. Thanks for watching and we will see you again next time.